All right, uh, everybody, we have um, Rex Bell on the, the uh, line with us today for an interview. Um, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com, where we do independent and third-party interviews uh, with candidates that are going to be on the ballots who are not Republicans and Democrats um, to get a broader view of what might be your options this November 6, 2012, when, um, you know, as Congress has uh, elections every two years. Um, and uh, what you hear on the media and, and, and even people that are upset with the choices is that they think there's only two of them. But uh, a lot of times there, there's three, there's four, but, uh, but Rex, actually, in, in his district uh, right here, we, there's just two. There's Brad Bookout, the Democrat, Luke Messer, the Republican. And uh, so he's really the only alternate choice here. Um, and uh, and that might be, a you know, that might help him out in the campaign a little bit. So, Rex, it's good to talk to you today. If you could tell us a little bit about what motivated you to be in the um, uh, runnings this year, to be in position, to receive the people's voice if people have had enough of um, – this uh, duopolistic um, repression of uh, true competition in our political field. And if you could also, um, if you can remember these three questions, this, uh, usually I just ask one at a time, but what, if you could tell us a little bit about your District 6 and just a, a brief um, you know, biographical summary of yourself, sir. Okay, well, uh, I'm running, uh, decided to run uh, on the Libertarian ticket because the uh, district had been changed. Uh, there was redistricting this year. Uh, we are in a situation, uh, I ran in 2010 uh, for state office, and that district was changed also. Uh, so we did some shuffling around with our candidates. Uh, you know, I've been a strong Tenth Amendment uh, supporter at the state level, and I, I thought it was important for us to send somebody to Washington, or at least uh, give give a voice uh, for somebody to go to Washington uh, that would support the Tenth Amendment. Um, or any of them nowadays. Uh, yes, any of the amendments, true. But the Tenth was the one that that's really hitting home, you know, since well, the federal government has become so rampant, uh, you know, we've got to have a little bit of defense, and I thought that this was, you know, that's uh, one of the, one of our best shots if we can, uh, if we can get the states to stand up and the, and the federal government uh, not to override them, and that's why I think not only is it important to have, uh, you know, limited government people at the state level, but also at the federal level. Um, in, in, in my run for the 6th District, uh, you know, this is something that I'm looking forward to when I ran for state, uh, the state house in 2010, as I mentioned. Uh, I set a record, it hadn't happened for 85 years, that a third, I was in a three-way race as a libertarian, and it was the first time in 85 years that a third-party candidate had received over 20% of the vote. Excellent. Uh, so, you know, I was real proud of that accomplishment. In my home county, uh, District 54 that I ran in was covers three counties, and in my home county, I actually came in second, uh, beat the Democrat, and uh, won six precincts. So, you know, uh, we've made some gains in this area, and I thought maybe it was time to spread it on to the, you know, take the next step up. Uh, you know, well, what hopefully the, this will... Yeah, what does the sixth district look like this year, sir? Well, it's... It got longer. <laughs> it's 19, 18 and a half counties is what it amounts to. Uh, it's wide open, uh, you know, as far as, uh, of course, it's still cut up to be a Republican district. Uh, you know, I'm sure that's uh, something they took into consideration when they were drawing it. Uh, we have, like, like you said, three candidates. Uh, Luke Messer, who is a Republican, is a lobbyist in Washington right now. And, you know, I would, I would like to think that the small government people and even a lot of big government people are upset with the lobbyist and, and would not support him in this race. The Democrat, who is Brad Bookout, uh, works for a government-funded agency up here in Muncie. So uh, when it comes down to somebody's looking for somebody that has an actual interest 
in reducing the size of government. I'm the only candidate of the three that has any inclination at all to reduce government. You know, the other two would be cutting their own throats to do that. Yeah, so at least reduce. I hope people realize that. Yeah, at least reduce the bad parts. And and you know what? If if our representation really reflected the polls, the polls right now, um, uh, Rex, it, it, it's um, it says according to the Gallup poll, and they polled a couple times this year, so it's a pretty consistent poll. It, the Congress has a historical low record. Um, approval rating of 10 percent so there really should only be um, about 10 percent uh, Republicans and Democrats in the Congress I mean if people really had their will expressed through representation maybe we'll see what happens this November I'm um, uh, you know this is an opportune time while they have that low percentage rates and and, and they've uh, you, you know just shown example after example of how um, they do things and and talking about the Tenth Amendment let's um since you brought that up let's um, explore that a little bit that's basically um, uh, basically what's if I got it right if, if, if it's not written in the Constitution that that means that um, you know it's pretty much up to the states or is that or individuals yes right. if it's not expressly given to the federal government you know in the Constitution then the federal government has no business it, it you know it's it's an exclusionary amendment. You know, it's uh, so the federal government nowadays says if it's not prohibited, then we're allowed to do it, and, right. and that's not the way it was set it's up, and like not the way it should be. Innocent before guilt, until proven guilty. Now they want to. It's kind of like turning the tables the same way. Yes. They want to make it guilty until proven innocent. That so. is definitely what it is, and, and it's you know it's come on us gradual, and people have just kind of accepted it. Um, you know, like turning up the uh, heat in the water in the frog, you know, and they've turned it up so slow. And, you know, we are in a situation now uh, that, you know, people can't name. And one of my favorite examples, you know, people cannot name three things that the government doesn't tax or regulate. That's, it's very hard to do. And this didn't happen all at once. And this is like our, our uh, the Tenth Amendment protections that we should be exercising uh, it didn't seem like a big deal the first time we needed to do it. It didn't seem like a big deal the second time. So we just kind of accepted that the uh, federal government has taken control of all this stuff, and not we've not really tried to do anything about it. And I think, uh, you know, like you talk about with the approval rating, uh, I think the stars are aligning uh, for limited government candidates now. Uh, you know, I think this uh, is a year that we'll make big gains. I think the stars are aligning. Um, everything's set. Um, uh, there's a lot of candidates in position. Over 70% of the districts in this um, country um, have an alternative uh, candidate, um, someone who will, I would argue, they might not agree on everything, but that I, I think they will take their oath to the Constitution sincerely. Um, I mean, basically what we have now is, is, is basically with the exclusion you know the kind of exclusionary principle you're talking about is the world's infinite so the, basically the government saying everything's regulated until it specifically says in the congress it, it and the constitution that it's not and, and that's just um you, you know pretty insane and 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 they, they basically said they can do whatever they want with the national defense authorization act anyways um and definitely it, you know it, that's horrible yeah it's an abomination and um and uh it, it really is a vote to, to um, uh, undo the Constitution without an amendment. I mean, if, um, for example, if California wants to, uh, you know, legalize marijuana, or if Colorado does, or if another state does want to, you know, legalize industrial hemp, um, do you think the, you, you know, and, and I, I like your argument for the individual level, too. I mean, if it's not even a state law, then individuals should be able to. I mean, unlike prohibition of alcohol, which we unfortunately had to go through, but but at least it was amended in the Constitution, and then they amended it back out. Now, they, the, the exact same principle, um, they have a, a billion-dollar um, department, you, you know, uh, enforcing um, an, an unconstitutional law. And, uh, yes, no constitutional authority at all 
for that, you know, for what they're, it, it's, it's mind boggling. We have the highest well, incarceration rate than any country in, in, yes. in the entire globe. Um, we should be ashamed of ourselves. It, we really it, should. We, we should. We should. And, uh, and we should be angry about that and, and demand change and, and justice and due process. And uh, those are the types of laws that, um, you, you know, we need to uphold that, um, you know, or pass a constitutional amendment to change it. And uh, so there are other states like um, like uh, Ver Vermont, I think, that, that might want to run their own national health plan um, and, and not use the Obamacare. You think those states should have a right to be able to do that if they want to? And there might be other states that might want to allow fracking and stuff, other states that might not. There could be other states that um, want to, uh, you know, there's a couple things that have come up as of recent. I mean, we're not talking about um, uh, slavery and stuff like that, which the Democrats and Republicans, you, you know, want to want to want to make, you know, that some kind of weird, yeah. abstract. Um, as soon as you mention the Tenth Amendment, they say, "Oh, well, you you're in favor of slavery." Well, you know, absolutely not. You know, there's still there are basic there's still the human rights, rights that we all have. Yeah, there's you know? still the Constitution. I mean, uh, and and, it, it, and without the Constitution, we still have obligations not to infringe on other people's rights, and certainly slavery infringes on a person's rights you know it's uh, just like uh, uh, forcibly taking that's forcibly taking somebody's labor just like the government forcibly taking somebody's uh, property it's the same type of thing you know we are bound without any contract or without any constitution not to infringe on on people's freedom so you know I, I, that doesn't hold any water with me when well, somebody I know it doesn't for you it. sir I, I just address it because that's like what's in the you know the, the talking points of the yeah. media and, and I that's think, what they always bring up. I think people should you know it should be presented as an opportunity to explain the Tenth Amendment because yeah. um, because actually, it, it, it's not, it's just like guns. It's not the guns that kill people. It's not the Tenth Amendment that does. It's whoever, how they interpret it and whoever's in power. And yeah. um, so it can be used actually like it has to actually fight slavery, like like Wisconsin did before the Civil War. It would yeah, allow the Dred Scott, you know, that was, was, was over that. So, and, and you, when you talk about the states uh, setting up their own health care, again, you know, certainly they have the right the states do, or I shouldn't say states' rights, they don't have rights, but the, the states have the ability to say, uh, you know, we're not going to participate in this federal program. You know, I would go so far as to say the states don't have, uh, yeah, shouldn't have the ability to, to force their own citizens to right. take part in it either, but if a state wants to set up a voluntary, uh, you know, health right. plan, well, they're certainly... Well, that's uh, would be allowed to do that. I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because sometimes I hear a libertarian saying like, um, uh, you, you know, I don't want to do that, but then they just leave it at that. Uh, they don't add the extra sentence going the extra mile like you just did, um, which is good. Uh, like if, if they do want to set up a voluntary system that pays for itself, Certainly. that is voluntary, then then, you know, let's try to design something good like that. Um, yes, but, but, this is yeah. something that I've always, you know, said as a libertarian, you know, I'm opposed to the initiation of force. I'm not going to use force to keep somebody from participating in a program. If a million people in Indiana say, hey, we want the state of Indiana to manage our health care, who am I to say, no, you can't do that? Yeah, and it might it is up to work. me to say you are not going to force other people to join in. And, and I would maintain the same thing at a federal level. If you want the government to uh, manage your retirement, uh, more power to you. You go ahead and go for it. But you don't have the right to force somebody else to participate in that. No, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, we're born with life shorts. I mean, it's a big universe. People don't have that perspective, and, and we shouldn't be forced to do anything um, as long as we don't step on others' toes. I right. Mean, that really is the As ultimate. long as we're not initiating a force or a fraud against another individual, uh, and, and I'm talking about adults, you know. This is basically a, a consenting adults issue that... Um, you know, people say, oh, well, you've, uh, you know, what about the children, that sort of thing. You know, I I'm talking about what consenting adults can and cannot do, 
and I am all for you know voluntary association in in uh, everything in that respect. Yeah, and, and and if people do want to, like you said, get together, save costs by being able to buy in bulk, save costs by not having executive pay, save costs maybe by lowering advertising and administration costs, and having. Um, a department that's uh, responsible by elected officials. Hey, if you can make that work, you know what? Maybe we might even, we might yeah. even throw in some good ideas that might even help. You, yeah. you, you know, and um, but just as long as it's voluntary and um, and and it and it's a true, it would be kind of a public option. That's a real option. It's not an option if you're forced to do it. Um, Definitely not. And uh, so that's that's refreshing, and, and that's you know the kind of ideas that need to come up because you know what? I mean, there might be a million people that might want to do that and they might very well like uh, have some success with it and uh, you know I've said many times there are more uh, and I'll, I'll just use the term Democrats there are more Democrats alive right now that would want to take part in Social Security than there were in the entire United States when Social Security was first formed so yeah there's the numbers are there you know that the people that are in favor of a more state control in their lives. There's a lot of people out there. The, the problem that I see with government, and one of the things that gets me involved is, uh, once the government is involved, then everybody has to do what the government says. And, and I think that's wrong. You know, I think sometimes compromise can amount to you go your way and we'll go our way. Uh, why can't we compromise that yeah, and, and, instead of instead of saying everybody has to come over to this side? Of course, and plus that that that, that causes staleness. Um, and um, I mean, a good thing we didn't. You know, I know this is overused, but but subsidize a horse and buggy, for example. You know, right. Good thing we allowed yeah. Henry Ford to, you know, do what he did. And um, and uh, it, it's 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 who knows how. Like a lot of the times, we don't advance. The reason we're not advancing now is. So many people are invested in the military-industrial complex. Um, I mean, it's it's a matter of jobs, uh, like why we can't cut like, y you know, uh, you know, almost like a half a trillion dollars. It's it's a matter of jobs why we can't, um, uh, reg you know, uh, clean up the FDA and these revolving doors of pharmaceutical industries that that you know just want to help the the businesses that they came from or are going to after they retire from. Uh, the government. I mean, it's 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 just a conflict of interest in the banking industry, and um, and, and we Across we even the use the term "too big to fail." I mean, that that was the excuse, and also the sky would fall. Why we and, and bailed out in 2008. Um, you know, about a trillion dollars, and 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 after um, that brief audit of the Fed, found out that there's trillions more. Um, and uh, so th these are people that that deserve to, you know, fail. That they, they they were already six. They, they didn't need our money in the first place. And 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 um, you can't have like a no risk of. Uh, they're not gambling with our money because gambling means they would have had some chance of losing it. But um, they, they never had a chance of losing. You know, this was. You know, like you say, this was. Uh, you know, I've heard it said many times that. Uh, uh, capitalism without failure is like religion without hell. You know, if there is no, uh, if there's no chance of losing, uh, you know, what's to stop anybody from taking any chance at all? You know, I, I, and the thing that aggravates me as much as anything is how the American people have bought in to we have to have government taking care of every aspect of our lives, and the government thrives on it. Uh, you know, whenever we talk about a uh, a bailout, uh, you know, the government promotes this as the only way, this is the only option to save things. Well, uh, it's not. You know, they're that way with uh, charity, uh, with welfare. You know, if the government doesn't do it, it won't happen. I, I don't buy into that. You know, I, I have more faith in people than that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, 43 cents out of every dollar we're paying. I mean, we're borrowing money just to have, um, you know, this kind of empire lifestyle, although only a few special interests like all empires benefits it's not really the benefit people, from it anyway. yeah so i mean what what do you think like right now it's 2012 we have a military budget do you think we could bring the military budget back to what like 2006 2003 levels or what what do you think um, yeah or earlier you know i think that we have some obligations to veterans that we still have to to be concerned about. I totally about. agree with that. I mean, that's but, one place where we could probably even increase some funds, actually. Yeah, but, but I think that we can start phasing, you know, uh, I've, I've uh, 
spoken many times, uh, you know, I, I don't think we can just turn things off right now. But we can start phasing some of this out. We can start bringing troops home from countries where they don't belong, where they are not, uh, where they're not protecting us against an imminent threat. You know, we don't need to be around nation building around the world. Uh, 170 some countries that we have troops in now. But we need to start bringing some of these veterans home and we can downsize our military to where our future obligations to veterans are not uh, so budget busting as what we have now. You know, the, the pensions that we uh, that are underfunded now, uh, along with the veteran obligations that are so underfunded now, we've got to start trimming and phasing some of this down. And, uh, you know, I don't care. Somebody pick a time. Pick five years, pick ten years, whatever you want to pick. But this is the direction we're moving. We're downsizing federal handouts. We're going to still take care of our veterans that need to be taken care of. But uh, a lot of this stuff is going to have to be turned over to the private sector. A lot of it is going to be handled possibly by the state. And, and when it's turned over to the private sector, there's a difference between the Republican version of being turned over to the private sector and the libertarian, I would gather. Like the Republican version is we're going to cozy up with some special interests and turn it over to the private sector. We're still going to take your tax dollars. We're just well, going to let somebody else hand them out. Yeah, you know, that, that, that needs to be differentiated because it's yes. not the same type of privatization at yeah, all. Right. You know, privatization, yeah, it, it's definitely uh, takes on a different meaning from, uh, uh, from different groups of people. But, uh, you know, basically... Because it's almost just as bad if, you know, you just you know, give corporate welfare to a company. You yes, know, if, if all you're doing is, is redistributing wealth, forcibly redistributing wealth, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me, you know, who, when somebody puts a gun in my, in my back and says, give me your money, and where they, what they do with it after that, does it really matter, you know? Once, once that money is stolen and taken, once your property is taken, does it really matter uh, whether and whether 51% of the people agreed to do it or 60% of the people agreed to do it or only 20% of the people agreed to do it. Uh, you know, that doesn't carry a lot of weight with me. What I want to get back to is this is a voluntary uh, type of thing that we're and, doing And it would here. make a people lot of these programs stronger if they were voluntary. Like if there was like, you know, a voluntary Social Security or voluntary Medicare for all or whatever, a public option, it would probably strengthen those um, because it would get people more involved um, to, to have more accountability and, and, and to keep up on their Congress people to make those, um, uh, if, you know, if they found it important to make those um, programs, yeah, uh, uh, you, you know, run 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 better and uh, be and, more and allow people that do not participate in them the freedom they would have more money to invest in the type of uh, retirement they wanted to oh, invest absolutely. in. Absolutely, it, it would be great. It, 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 that 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 to me that's the ultimate compromise allow those kind of things but let them be voluntary it kind of is a, it, that i think that's the way where things would have to give um for there to be like a new renaissance now i mean the republicans i, I mean they say they're going to vote against obamacare i don't believe it um mm, I, I, don't, I don't either i, I don't believe they, they're the ones who originally introduced it in the 90s i mean i, I was think Bob what we'll Dole see and is, newt gingrich yeah. that uh, in, introduced an individual mandate first I think the only change we're going to see is a name change. It won't be called Obamacare anymore. They'll come up with a different title for it, yeah, but it's care. basically going to be the same. It'll be the same program. You know, we're, we're in a position, we've, we have said that the federal government can take as much as it wants to take from the citizens and give it to whoever they want to give it to. There's still we, going to be a lot of people who don't have insurance. I mean, it, it's there's lo like for example, a lot of small business people who make like you know probably the, the, the American median wage. I mean, somewhere between thirty to sixty thousand dollars, especially if you're single. It, it's it's you're not going to get the, you know that much of a subsidy. You're not going to be able to buy just catastrophic insurance. They're going to force you to buy like full coverage. Right. Um, and uh, a lot of people like the catastrophic that they have. Um, this is what I have. I'm a small business, and we have a ten thousand dollar deductible. We but never you're not going to be able to insurance. keep that catastrophic no, insurance. No, they will not allow me they to will keep not that. Not allow you to keep it. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's one of those things that it works for us. Yeah. 
uh, we don't run to the doctor every whip stitch, and a lot of people wouldn't, you know. And I think that one of the main things, that, you know, that drives up health care costs is uh, people are, you know, they're separated from the cost of it. They don't realize what it costs because they don't pay it, you know, and that drives costs up. So Now, it would uh, also help if you had a health savings account for that $10,000 deductible. Definitely. I think definitely. a lot of Republicans or, you know, conservatives, when they explain the health savings accounts, they, they need to go the extra mile in that, too. Sometimes they say, well, I'm for the health savings accounts. But when people hear that, they don't really understand, like, oh, well, I can't afford a health savings account. Well, they, they need to see the full picture of that. Like, the purpose of the health savings account account is that if basically if you have you also it, it's implied that you might get catastrophic insurance with that and the health savings account basically is there if you ever need to use that deductible and um and that's yeah. the other half of it and, and actually like uh john stossel on on fox business news did a story on how whole foods kind of does their health program but i mean yeah. whoever equated health insurance with the employer I, I mean that to, to me that needs to be separated too. Also, it, they they, yes. they they don't belong in the same sentence. I mean, your employer isn't you, you know you, you know your 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 nanny. It's it's it's, it's the, most people don't even feel like talking about work once they're out of work. So why you know have it yes. as part of your um, health plan? Um, uh, and, and 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 if we really did have the free market work, and I mean we have nothing like the free market in healthcare right now. And there's so many. Um, uh, cro cronyism going on in the FDA, and um, so uh, you know, you, you, I'm glad to hear you say you were against the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, um, and 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 realize um, and the reason why. I mean, how it's such a serious thing, uh, the drug war. Um, I mean, really, those three issues there: the the drug war, um, our civil liberties, uh, foreign policy, and our military. I mean, you could someone right now in this day and age, because of the way the State of the Union could probably run on those three issues alone and that would impact things in our world and our country more i mean in fact but instead they, they want to have like an hour-long debate on like um you know head start or something which it really is like a fraction of a fraction it, it's almost not it's yeah. a, i can understand it's important but it's almost that we're talking you're talking about trillions compared to like you know millions and yeah. um i mean yeah. to me that's like you know we'll get to that once we to, you know, get these huge, big, massive, you know, trillion-dollar issues. Yes, out of the way. we have to start somewhere, and there's no sense picking away at this little stuff around the bottom. You know, we have we got a real problem. We have an economic yeah, it's crisis Paul Ryan kind of stuff where we don't even balance the budget for 30 years, and that's just balancing. That doesn't even mean paying any of it off. That's yeah, just, that, that's ridiculous. That that anybody is getting the least bit excited about. Paul Ryan's budget plan. I, you know, I couldn't believe it. I said, this is somebody searching uh, for something to be happy about. Uh, you know, that's, that's just how that comes across to me because uh, nobody, I don't believe anybody with any fiscal responsibility at all can look at that plan and say, well, yeah, that's great. We're going to balance the budget in 30-some years. Uh, it's we, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, maybe they should give a math test uh, besides <laughs> taking the oath before someone gets to Congress. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, so is there any issues we haven't mentioned here so far? And, and, and some people might say, you know, I want more details. But, I mean, this, I mean, just by saying, you know, you're against a drug war just shows that, that right there that should give the listener like about 10 different things to think about that that you know you're com you're compassionate uh, you have common sense you're able to see the big picture just by saying that you know you're willing to stand up to special interests uh, I mean that that implies about 10 different issues in itself and all of these do relate I mean maybe if we cut the fat out of some of the other things you, you know we could steady ourselves through some of the things people find more important I mean it all relates so we are covering all the issues here yeah there's going to be some, you know, and I've said this many times, if we get our freedom back, uh, if we downsize the federal government, there's going to be some residual freedoms. There's people out there and say, well, you know, my main issue is the drug war. Well, you know, this is going to be, there's going to be some residual freedoms once the, all these alphabet agencies from the uh, federal government are downsized. There's, there's benefits, uh, with limited government uh, that, you know, it doesn't just have to be tied to one issue or two issues. 
uh, you know, I, I honestly believe that that we are will be better off with a smaller government across the board. Well, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not crazy about drugs or anything myself. I, the reason why I think that's an important issue because it's something that really separates um, independent third parties from these third party candidates. It, it really well, of course kind of, it does. is a test. It's something they're afraid to even talk about. Even the Democrats usually. Yeah. And and it's something where like it, it shows that you're not sold out. Um, that you're not just playing politics. And, um, and I also think about this. I mean, I was thinking about the Emancipation Proclamation recently with Abraham Lincoln. They, they freed about 200,000 slaves. If, if we ended the drug war, there would be more people than the 200,000 that would be freed. Um, yes. I mean, we're talking about an Emancipation Proclamation here. There are families right now that are separated. There are husbands and wives that might have just been married for two years, and now they're separated. Yep. There are kids separated from their parents, and that is the reason why I talk about it. And, and, and it's, 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 it's to not even see that or even have that kind of empathy towards those people is to keep the status quo going and um, I mean so what are what are our actions compared to our goals and right. um, and, so, and you know and when you get past that the cost yeah. the cost of it you know not just the what it how it kills us socially the cost of imprisoning these people you know it's it's phenomenal and you know I'm a person um, I don't do year. drugs. I don't drink. Uh, you know, I drink water and coffee. That's that's it. And I take a vitamin once in a while and and some kind of herbal supplement that my wife slips me once in a while. But that's about all. You know, so it's not like I'm uh, I'm pushing this for myself because I want to run uh, run out and use drugs. But the, you know, there's a reality to look at here. Like you mentioned, you know, the social aspect of it, the financial aspect of it, the freedom aspect of it. The freedom of of an adult to make a decision, you know, on their own. It's it's ridiculous what the drug war has done to us on, on so many different levels. Yeah, and then the after effect. I mean, just like that has bad um, uh, unintended consequences, like hemp um, being illegal that we have to import. It also will have unintended good consequences. Yes. By by by, by legalizing. Um, uh, yeah. freedom and um, my point exactly yes yeah absolutely I mean there's all this um, unknown potential that uh, could go either way and um, you, you know Bastier talked about the seen and the unseen uh, you know that's not on the bad side all the time it's on the good side you know the we know what some of the benefits are we don't know what all the benefits would be uh, you know we know what the uh, the downside of uh, taxes are, but we don't know, you know, we don't always know what all the downside is to it because there are things you don't see what happens when the when the government pulls that much money out of the economy. Yeah, basically, I mean, new laws should be written to um, expand freedom, not detract it. So the Tenth Amendment, um, again, it, it's, 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 there's still the Constitution that, that, you know, they can't override without a constitutional amendment. Um, so we're not talking about going backwards to tyranny. We're talking about keeping this momentum of freedom going forward that has only been around a, a small percentage of our history and, yeah. and it's still very new and um, and it still can be improved upon I mean maybe we need more um, a balance of power maybe we need more transparency and accountability I mean th there's still improvements but it's 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 still a baby the Constitution and, and, and that's the baby we don't want to throw out with the bathwater um, the, the but the, the Constitution the, the young um, Constitution that that we have that that is what the states it's it's we already have like three branches of government which which I mean that's been a blessing I mean we have the House the Senate the judiciary and and, and um, the, the presidency, and, and supposedly the media is like the fourth branch, although they have, uh, you know, they, 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 although there's a new media coming along, like us and, and the Internet. Um, but then um, also, you could, if you want even more balance of power, why not add states to that equation? All it is, it, it's nothing more than just another balance of power. I mean, that's really all it yes. is. And, and, and that's and, what the tenth was all about, you know. I mean, California, they're introducing now that they want to um, have, they have an initiative referendum to force um, companies to uh, label genetically modified foods. And so if they want to do that, they should have a right to do that. And, um, 
and so if they want to, you know, if Texas wants to restrict how, you know, the TSA gropes people, maybe that could have like a good um, domino effect around the country. I, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, and, and I think the House of Representatives is how we take back our country slowly every two years. And hopefully this year, you know, will be a blast. Um, Rex, I, I'm sorry, we kind of just are speeding through some of these issues, but is there any people that you've been thinking about lately, um, either in the past or that are modern um, characters that have been on your mind lately in the last couple months since this election cycle, I guess? Um, and, and, uh, and if you wouldn't mind sharing that with us um, and, and, and the reasons why you've been thinking about, you know, that or those certain people. Well, you know... I, I guess I think of so much about the founders, you know, and I, I think a lot. Uh, one of my early influences in the uh, libertarian movement was Harry Brown, and, he, and basically he introduced me to libertarianism. and And I read uh, his writings pretty often just to refresh myself. And uh, you know, he was uh, he was the ultimate, you know, libertarian. Uh, I guess I would say he was the ultimate libertarian politician because he was, you know, the ultimate libertarian would probably have nothing to do with politics at all. But Harry Brown saw the benefits of working in the system, and that's what, uh, you know, that's what I want to do. This is the system that we have. Uh, you know, what I would, what I would like to do uh, is use the Constitution to our advantage now. Uh, I run for office basically as a matter of self-defense. I certainly uh, don't do it because I enjoy it, but uh, you know it's it's a matter of self-defense, and, and that's that's just why I'm running. And uh, you know I draw from the early libertarians and the uh, current day libertarians that uh, uh, you know is where I get my strength from and the and the will to go on. And then of course you know in, in our area here uh, we have a strong libertarian representation as was evidenced in our last in my last race for the state house uh, so you know even when you get a little bit discouraged you look around and say uh, you know it's out there it's starting to turn there's uh, more and more people are getting disgusted with the way things are and uh, you know i think it's going to bode well for us this year yeah um it's uh it, it, that that's you know some powerful thoughts there and um i mean i would just say that made me think of um i mean libertarianism and and, and a true libertarian is a tariness that i wouldn't even want government but honestly and that would be the ultimate is just living under the golden rule like i mean that that's that's where we want to aim to i mean but, and, and, yeah that you know that's the how is uh uh that's a prize in the sky, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, uh, what we've got to do is work towards it, you know. I, I'm going to say that this is, uh, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve, uh, you know, and, and uh, if we can get there, I, I've said that I'll vote for any bill that lessens the size of government. It may not be a perfect bill, but I've always said I don't want perfect to stand in the way of better. So if we can do something to make government better, and if we can do something to make it smaller, yes, I'll support that. It may not be exactly what I want, but if it's moving in the right direction, uh, then that's that's what I'll do right now. Although I'm if not it had like NDAA, you know, type, type you know provisions attached to it, so, I mean, you might you know not vote for that. Right. But, uh, but but you, you know, but the true anarchists, I, I would also say, is that is the people who have it, we already have in power. I mean, when when they subvert the Constitution, um, they're really um, advocating. They're saying there is lawless, no law. They're, yeah. Exactly, they're saying there's yeah. no law. I mean, if if a person can feel like they can be picked up for just having political views or just being in the wrong place at the wrong time because there's any been reason. plenty of mistakes, any reason at all. Yes. It, it, why would they even accept to go in to um, and and go through the the, the, the you, you know the um, process of a trial? They might as well just fight tooth and nail and, and or hide out in the woods somewhere or something, right. you know, because they they're not going to get the due process. I mean, John Adams even defended that British soldier that you know, you know the Americans had caught as in John F. Kennedy's profiles of courage. I mean, just because we treat others like we want to be treated, because that's how we want to be treated as well, and and and, and to have confidence. And um, so, uh, so yeah, they're the real anarchists. And um, and and really, um, 
you know, it, we can try to, instead of just not voting, how about just not voting for Republicans and Democrats? Because, I mean, not voting could lead, end up, you know, being like Nazi Germany, too. And, and, yes, and, and yes, that's so. one thing that, uh, you know, anarchists need to remember, that their votes aren't counted at all. So, you know, this is something, and, and I've said many times, in a li an anarchist could survive quite well in a libertarian society. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely. Because it's, uh, you know, it's going to be just 99% voluntary, you know. Of course, they say, well, what about, uh, you know, sales tax or whatever to take care of the military or the police or whatever, you know. I, I, if they want to go to everything, uh, you know, totally voluntary, that's fine. Uh, you know, go ahead and keep working towards that. But if we can get you this close... Uh, you know, if we if we if the libertarians can get to a libertarian society, the anarchists have got a lot shorter way to go. Then, you know, so and like I said, they could live very, very comfortably in a libertarian society. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think even people that aren't in your district, or people even like you know, let's just say, I mean, there's some Green Party people out there in your district. They should support you. I mean, because just by you getting on the ballot, getting noticed, um, getting more. Um, attention will, I mean, open people's eyes up that, that, that you know, this whole paradigm has shattered and, 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 yes. and it's back to, you, you know, uh, America again. Um, and, and it's back to like us, you know, getting busy and, and getting these people thrown out. I mean, just throw them off the ships like, you know, the tea that was thrown off. I mean, that's the true party throwing, the, the true tea party would be throwing these people off, like just pretending pretend like you know when you look at a republican or democrat that they're just like a um like like a tea like like a piece of tea or something like yeah. a tea leaf or something and um and and just you know imagine start them over throwing them out into the harbor yeah um and uh, occupy the um uh the house you know um uh let's let's uh shake things up um have a shot heard around the world um and uh you know even if we get like some double digits and there's a couple people running with you in um Indiana. We've interviewed a couple others that are also, so there are many other choices. And um, Rex, is there going to be any debates we could expect to see you in or any um, events that uh, you'd like to announce um, here, sir? Well, next Tuesday, I'm going to be in a, ball, in a debate at Ball State University uh, with uh, the other two candidates. Uh, then on Thursday, I'll be in a debate in uh, North Vernon. Uh, with the other two candidates. Uh, I can't give you the TV contact information for Ball State. If you'll check on uh, my website, which is www.electrexbell.com, or my Facebook page, Rex Bell for Congress, I'll have the information up there when I get, uh, hopefully I'll have a link to the debates. Good. Yeah, that's elect, E-L-E-C-T-R-E-X-B-E-L-L, -E -E -L -L, rexbell.com. And uh, so, um, well, um, Rex, um, it's good to talk with you today and to have this honest conversation. And, um, in fact, I'm talking to someone, you, you know, who's part of a party that, you know, probably has a higher approval rating than the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, and, and, again, if, if, if we really had the people in Washington that reflected that. I mean, Rex, I, from what I see here, and I'm not just saying this be, because I'm in a, very independent third parties, but I mean, I, I would think that most of the people I've interviewed, including yourself, are more qualified and, and more credible, are the really the best choice compared to, you, you know, what what we've been had and, and with these, uh, you know, status quo Republicans and Democrats. I, I, you know, I think so. Maybe. You know. <laughs> I mean, the, the people, sh I, I, it's, it, it's not, you know, but there's so, so much to say about that. It's just got my tongue tied. Um, so, um, Rex, good talking with you, and, and Godspeed uh, on, on November 6, 2012. Um, I'll say goodbye to you real quick after this interview, and thanks for your time today, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks.